We often hear that left-wingers are a censorious bunch of snowflakes. Sometimes that's true, <laughs> although, although it is overblown. The point is overblown. One thing is for sure, the one thing we can all agree on um, is that there is no one more, skin, more thin-skinned in this country, no one more likely to make a complaint to the manager when they see something that just makes them feel, you know, in the most minor way uncomfortable than Britain's nationalist right. And this became apparent again um, this week when over 10,000 British right-wingers complained about a dance on the talent show Britain's Got Talent. And now the performance by dance troupe Diversity, they won the competition in 20 or 2009 and paid homage to the Black Lives Matter movement. You can probably guess um, why these complainants were so annoyed. Um, let's take a look at some images of the performance. Unfortunately, we can't show you it for copyright reasons. You can look it up on, on YouTube. Um, so you've got here, well, this you can see the troupe here. Um, hopefully we can also see some images of, of, of cops kneeling on, on one of the black performers neck. Um, you've got dancers filming that on smartphones and um, people dancing around riot cops. It's, it's worth looking at it yourself. It's a, I thought it was a pretty good performance. I mean, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's Saturday night TV. The message was good. Um, but yes, 10,000 people, over 10,000 people have made complaints. I think that's the, the, the most complaints, the second most complaints in a decade for a dance, for a dance about black lives mattering. Um, now, I want to show you a clip, which is one of the members um, of this troupe talking about this experience um, on KISS FM. Um, so this is Jordan Banjo. He is, you know, one of the leaders of, of this group, Diversity. Because they won in 2009, they've become sort of celebrities. Now, Jordan Banjo hosts a KISS breakfast show with his, well, another member of the troupe, Perry Kieli or Keeley. Um, so this week he spoke about the raft of complaints about their performance um, live on air. Let's take a look. We won Britain's Got Talent 11 years ago and never, ever to anything we've done have we had a response like this. Like normally it's always love and of course you get some critique like, but normally it's focused on the dance, mm -hmm. right? And uh, this one, it, it was different. Like Pell said, it was really, it was really important. It was special to us and, you know, we're all about positivity and love and we got so much positivity and love back from this one, but we also got, you know, bombarded with messages and articles mm -hmm. and horrible stuff about all of us, about our families, about how even now diversity isn't diverse enough because there's only five white people in it. Like, man, it's uh, like, I can't speak for anyone else, but it's sad. Like, it's sad, genuinely. Like, I feel anxious and worried saying something like Black Lives Matter when that's all we want, man. Like, it's just yeah. love and positivity. Like, no one's saying only Black Lives Matter, but I don't, like, as a son, as a, as a dad, like, I look at Pell and I just wanna, yeah, man. It's all positivity, it's all love, but uh, let's keep it moving on KISS. I mean, that's really horrible to watch. Like, the guy is nearly in, in tears. And you can see, what you, if you want, I really do recommend you go watch, watch the piece, because especially just to realise how little it takes to trigger Britain's right-wing nationalists. Because uh, the, you, know, you might be imagining, oh, people were this annoyed. Maybe it included, you know, them saying, fuck the police, all cops are bastards. You know, we need to overthrow the state. They didn't say any of that. All they said was Black Lives Matter. And actually it was quite, it was quite a positive message. They mm. were basically saying that coronavirus has now sort of brought us together, people clapping, NHS workers, let's build, you know, a more positive society. There were rainbows in the background. This was shown on, you know, Saturday night on ITV. This mm. was not a, well, it was radical in a way, but it wasn't an aggressive or a, um, it didn't have any controversial in it other than lots of black people, and actually it's a mixed organization, so there's black people, white people, people from all ethnicities in this troupe, talking about how Black Lives Matter, how we should challenge police violence and how we should try and build a more inclusive anti-racist society. And that is enough to get 10,000 people to complain to ITV to say, this should not be on our televisions on a Saturday evening. Um, now, some of the um, news stories about this have been a little bit coy about what precisely was in these complaints. I suppose you can kind of imagine um, what it's going to be and maybe the journalist didn't want to repeat it. Um, but we can see, I sort of looked at what, you know, where, where has this been critiqued in the mainstream media? You know, I wanted to find an example of who has a problem with this. And surprise, surprise, um, there was a complaint in The Telegraph or, you know, the write-up in The Telegraph sort of intimated towards why people were so annoyed that people would dare go on ITV and do a performance about Black Lives Mattering. 
Um, so this is in the Telegraph. The abuse directed at Banjo is obviously unacceptable. Racial injustice, moreover, is clearly a subject which needs to be protested on the airwaves. In the case of diversity, the crux of the issue would appear to be whether Britain's Got Talent was the appropriate forum to deliver that message or whether a brave and dignified gesture has backfired. While many will consider it the correct thing to have done, the thousands bombarding Ofcom clearly don't agree. They presumably believe that the ITV talent show should be a safe space for those wishing to take a breather from the turmoil sweeping the world. They may even feel that the broadcaster was in breach of its implicit promise that Britain's Got Talent is where you go when you want to forget about the strife beyond your front door. If you can't escape from it all on a Simon Cowell produced ITV variety series, then where can you? Now, this is just the most classic apologia for people who don't want to hear about racism. It's like, oh, yeah, people should talk about racism, but they shouldn't talk about it on the kind of shows which the general public watch. They should talk about them on shows which, you know, aren't on um, at, you know, at prime time. They should talk about them on shows where only people who are already converted watch them. What these people don't want is for, you know, convincing persuasive messages. I'm sure the majority of people who watched that performance found it incredibly powerful. I think it probably reminded them of the injustice that goes on in this world and, you know, the damage that is done to black people by institutional racism, both in the United States and, and in the UK. And it's precisely that, which is why writers in The Telegraph, why these 10,000 complainants are pissed off because they know this is effective. It's effective having an inclusive, powerful message going out on primetime television, which is telling people racism still exists, it matters, and we need to fight it. And that's, you know, that's what boils their piss. And I just, I can't stand that line, which, you know, it's fine. Obviously we have to protest racism. Just don't do it here. Go and watch it for yourselves. I mean, cause I was just watching it before we did the show and I thought, okay, like you said, there might be some sort of something provocative about it. I mean, not that I would care, but you know, you have to think about a kind of the, the kind of audience member that, that might, it, it's completely inoffensive. Um, and, and it makes you think, you know, if these people heard, you know, Sam Cooke, Mm. Chain gang. I've been working on the chain gang. That I don't want to hear this about black oppression and black men working in the chain gangs in 1930s America. Thank you very much. Ofcom complaint. Like this is so crazy. We have a multi-racial, multicultural society. We should be able to address these things in a, in a quite relaxed, artistic way, which is what they did. This speaks to the fact we do have a very significant and vocal minority of people in this country who who, who just don't want to be confronted with a bunch of things they don't like. If you you know, I don't watch much television these days. If you don't like what you're watching, change the channel. It's that easy. You know, if you liked everything that you saw on the television, you'd be watching it all the time. How hard is it? You aren't the center of the world. And it gets this thing about the right cancel culture. Right, The left is so obsessed with cancel culture. There is no bigger group of self-defined, self-reflective victims in this country than the right. You know, you, we saw Lawrence Fox yesterday. I'm a victim. I've been cancelled because somebody blocked me. What the hell are you talking about? You know, the same guy, Lawrence Fox, said uh, several months ago, he was watching the film 1917. I haven't seen it. I want to watch it in a Great cinema. Movie. Yeah, I want to watch it in a cinema. Um, 1917. And he said, oh, look, there's, a, there's an Asian guy there. How ridiculous. <laughs> 800, and you know, in the first and second world war, I think in the second world war, I think 800,000 people of African origin. For the biggest volunteer army in human history were people from South Asia fighting for the British Empire in the Second World War. If you're ignorant, don't make that the rest of our problem as a society. It wasn't tokenism. That was actually, it was, un it was understating the contribution of, of people from beyond Europe, from the Global South in the First World War. Read a book. And it is precisely what they accuse the left of, because what right-wingers say is, you know, the left, they're, they're, they've got coddled minds. So they don't want to know the truth if it offends them. But that's exactly what's going on here. Lawrence Fox doesn't, you know, it might be the case um, that black people were fight, or they were, but I mean, you know, for, we're taking his perspective. It might be the case that non-white people were fighting on the Western Front in the Second World War, the First World War. But, but I don't want to know. Why should I have to know that? It's the same here. Oh, it might be the case. No, no, one's, den no one's denying that uh, white people do kill black people in the United States because of police violence, but we don't want to. Know. We don't want to know. Like, don't, 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 uh, they want to coddle their own minds because they don't want to know about any of the injustices that are going on in the world in case it makes them feel uncomfortable. Yeah.